We have a very special guest. She is a B girl from San Diego. She's only 16, but taking the world by storm. Her name is Logan, but she also goes by B girl logistics. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Also, she is representing Underground Flow and Red Bull. Guys, yes, I did say Red Bull. That is so cool. But not only is she representing those, she is the season two World of Dance champion with the loud. What? How did we get you here? <laughs> I don't know even know how we got you here. <laughs> so cool. I love World of Dance. Yeah. Yo. Just watch her stuff. <laughs> yeah, so our first video of the day is going to be Logan because she is awesome. Show it to me. <laughs> Dang! Oh. <laughs> Dude, the last time I did that, I don't know if I landed on my neck. And <laughs> so I haven't done it since since maybe two years ago. Okay, when you learn new skills, because obviously you break on the ground, like the hard ground, yeah. right? <laughs> so do you always like learn it on the like a gymnastics no, floor? No, so most of the time I learn moves on the hard ground. Because that's oh how we do. That's like what what the flow that we dance on. Right. Um, but if it's a really scary or difficult move, then it helps to learn it on a softer floor. I'm bony. <laughs> <laughs> so like the hard ground just sounds like it hurts. Yeah. You can well, never it's do not parkour. a spin move. No. It's not as like I would say there's not as much um, like air stuff as mm. like gymnastics. There's a lot of, you know flips. But this stuff, it's very, it's still grounded. Like there's a lot of spins. There's some air power, but there's not really that many flips involved. What is that? What is this move called? The move we just watched. The one we just watched is called the Air Flare 1.5. Um, because I Sounds do so air. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like she's about to go to like battle. Guys, I'm about to break out my some 1.5. Air, air, air Flare 1.5. <laughs> air Flare 1.5. It's intense. Can you imagine <laughs> your Chanko 2.0. <laughs> That would sound cooler. It though. would sound Besides cooler. Besides your Chanko Devil, your Chanko 2.0. What is that? Is that one on, on Vault? Vault, yeah. Oh, dude, so, yeah. I'm starting to learn those before I quit. So she was a gymnast. We knew of her. Janae met her. Yeah, so she went to UCLA Gymnastics Summer Camp back when you were nine. Yes. So that was my first year, I believe. So I was a freshman. And so she came in, I think you were level six at the time. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain day where like after all the practices, because I swear we had like three different training <laughs> sessions during <laughs> camp. But we'll have like a dance party. There just came a point where we like all circled around her because she was also really, really good at dancing. Like she's amazing at dancing. So we would just, we all ended up watching her because she had this whole routine or just whatever. You were freestyling, I think. Yeah. But it was so cool. But so <laughs> you basically were doing gymnastics and dance at the same time, or did you think that, or were you doing gym to help you with dance? So I started gymnastics to help me with dance, and then I got into it and I fell in love with both. Wow. Yeah, and so uh, for a while I was balancing both, and then at one point I had to choose one because I was getting super busy. Yeah. Uh, so that, the camp was like right before I quit gymnastics. We all loved her. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. It's just like, oh, and you can just tell like, oh, well, she's really advanced at dancing. Like, this is something that she, she's going to go far, and she really has gone so far. And that's amazing that gymnastics helped you because, I mean, what they do or what you guys do is so athletic. Like, yeah, no, seriously. Both, both. Are there other B girls who are just as young? Are you the youngest? No, there's a lot, like, especially I'd say in Japan mm. and Europe. Um, there's a lot of young B-girls. Um, there's not a lot of B-girls in the U.S. Oh, okay. Um, She's a rare one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in Japan, and they do, like, crazy power moves. And then in Europe, the young B-girls do a lot of flexible, like, bridge stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so the styles vary depending on, like, where people live in the world. So, Logan, Elena Storez asked, when did you start dancing? What age? I started dancing when I was eight years old, and that was in 2011. Oh my gosh. I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> what year were you born? 2003. Jesus. <laughs> when I, well, okay, how I got into dancing is I didn't even want to start dancing. My dad um, tricked me into getting it. <laughs> I just did like drawing and singing by myself and um, he was like, do you want to try hip hop dance? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was hoodwinked into And then dancing. I thought I was going to go to drawing class and then he opens the door and it's a bunch of kids dancing. Oh, he really tricked you then. Yeah, he did. Oh. And then I went inside and then I was like, what is this? What's going on? And it was really scary, but 
the thing is like once they turned on the music and I started dancing it just felt like really fun like thrilling like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's I think one of the huge biggest reasons why I love uh, breaking because it's kind of scary Oscar dot breaks asks how do you balance oh how to balance school and dance and still manage to progress substantially in both aspects with a freezing emoji <laughs> It's kind of like when you balance anything, um, you just maximize your time. Um, time management is so huge. And, um, Say that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not procrastinating. And I honestly, I'm so used to multitasking. It's kind of bad. <laughs> and yeah, just being very, I think in the end it comes down to being driven too. Just wanting to do both and wanting to succeed in both. And then doing everything I possibly can to reach the goals in both areas. So yeah, it's a lot of multitasking, a lot of um, taking advantage of time in the car, time on the plane, um, waking up earlier if I need to. Yeah. Why X Deanna? I was gonna be like Judiana. <laughs> <laughs> like as creative as possible. Have you thought of quitting dance, and how did you keep it going? So I've never thought of quitting dance, but I did take a two year break from breaking. Mm. Um, and I was still, I think I was like 12 uh, when I took that break. So I was still training on my own, but I wasn't involved in the scene because I, I feel like it was like almost like a burnout, but I was young. It was mm. weird. Like I would mm. battle every single weekend. And train, and I was That's young. A lot. Yeah, and I would train at the same time. So um, I think at a young age, I started to not enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. And I felt for me, this is something that's actually very common with I think young athletes is sometimes at times I felt like I wasn't doing it for myself, but I was doing it for other people. And then that's when I was like, oh, this isn't fun. And like, I just, I felt like I needed to like prove something to other people when in actuality, I did not need to do any of that. And so I wanted to enjoy what I was doing. And then I like told my dad, like, look, I'm not really enjoying it. I think I need to take a break. And then that's when I did more choreo. Mm. And that's when I really fell in love with like the urban dance community with Kinjas. <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> so and I've been saying it like, I've been telling people wow that Ken Jones is so amazing <laughs> no one has corrected like, me no one has corrected me like oh me. she don't even know she's she gonna tell her no okay cool we can <laughs> um what would you say to people that are yeah younger people that are maybe experiencing burnout because mm. it happens a lot and very often I would, from your experience from my experience I would say make sure you're doing it for yourself and not for anyone else um, unless you absolutely know that it's your passion and that you're using it um, to want to inspire others I think that's the only reason I would do it for others is to want to inspire others rather than doing it because someone told me to or mm -hmm. because I feel like it'll make this person happy like you have to do it because you really love it and know that it's okay to do it for fun too like it's a, you don't have to take it seriously um i think at a young age i felt like i needed to like be at this like high in the mm -hmm. skill you know and then i realized like what i was like what 11 years old like i could be doing this like just for fun you know and then um as i started to do it for fun i i uh, fell back in love with breaking and then now I genuinely enjoy doing it seriously because I, you know, want to. But I had to take the time to um, to realize that I do enjoy it and I do love it. So.